Hey there, humans, and welcome to another edition of News for Human Use, an oasis of truth in the digital desert of deceit that people call the internet. I'm Gene Pocket. I'm a best-selling author, a public speaker, and the founder of the Human Party. I'm also the only candidate for president of the United States of America in the year 2020 who isn't in the pocket of big politics. I'm the only one who has the courage to utter the real threat by name. Bots, machines, and artificial intelligences. We are standing on the precipice of being completely replaced by these synthetic creatures, and there's not one one of our elected officials doing anything to stop it. These elected officials, the very people we put our trust in to look out for our human interests, these elected officials turn a blind eye to the bot infestation and line their pockets with donations from the oligarchs who control our economy. The same oligarchs who treat human workers as a demanding nuisance and human customers as cattle to be fattened and fed to the unquenchable mouth of data to sustain their bloated empire. I've had enough. Gene Pocket and the courageous members of the Human Party are taking a stand. We're taking a stand before it's too late because we, the people, are on the brink of total annihilation. And you know this because in a recent survey, the number of adults in America that reported having no sex reached an all-time high in 2018, highlighting an aging population and higher numbers of unattached people, a trend that's been rising for the last three decades, for 30 years. Now I'm trying to remember what happened 30 years ago. All right. Not only are Americans having less sex, but this week the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, released the birth statistics for the year 2018, and the findings are bleaker than ever. The number of births for the United States in, the, in 2018 was down 2% 2 from 2017. It's the fourth year that the number of births has declined, and the lowest number of births in 32 years. That's just about in line with the proliferation of bots, machines, and artificial intelligences that was heralded by the metastasization of the internet. As human numbers dwindle, the machines are there to take our place. Now, the total fertility rate for the United States in 2018 was down 2% from the rate in 2017, a record low for the nation. The total fertility rate was again below replacement, which is the level at which a given generation can exactly replace itself. The rate has generally been below replacement since 1971 and consistently below replacement for the last decade. Now, I've talked about this before, and one of the solutions I've proposed is throwing open the borders. We need every last human we can get if we're going to be able to survive the mortal threat to human survival. But I'm afraid increased immigration alone isn't, isn't going to solve the problem, because there's more problems than just low fertility. There have been a lot of tragic stories in the last couple decades about human-on-human -human gun violence. Last year, the New York Times reported, quote, nearly 40,000 people died from guns in the United States last year, the highest in 50 years, end quote. Now, it's a sad commentary on the times we live in that the first place the mind goes to, to after hearing a headline like this is the tragic examples of mass shootings. These events have been reported on endlessly by a media desperate to profit off human tragedy. These mass shootings and their victims have also been used as props by politicians trying to get on TV, a fact that had to be pointed out just last week by teenage victims of violence in the Highlands Ranch STEM school shooting. Having that STEM is awful, but it's not a statistic. We can't be used for a reason for gun control. We are a people, not a statement. The response by pundits and politicians to these tragic human-on-human -human tragedies has almost always been to blame guns, either to blame the type of firearm or to blame access to firearms. If only we didn't have these assault rifles, they say, we wouldn't have these mass shootings. But the truth is, is that handguns are used in more than half of these mass shootings. And the reality is that in over 33,000 gun deaths in America last year, 387 were a result of a mass shooting incident. That's 1%, 1% of all gun deaths. But these stories get nearly 100% of the news coverage. And as far as access to firearms goes, gun ownership has been on the decline for decades. There are fewer firearms around now than when you were born. Now, if politicians really cared about preventing gun violence perpetrated in mass shootings, they would turn their anger toward the news media and their sensationalist cover of these horrifying events. Nicole smith Dahlman, a journalism professor at the University of Oregon, had this to say, quote, we know from research that the way mass shootings are covered can have a contagion effect, so that's very dangerous, end quote. Jay Walker, an economics professor at Old Dominion University and co-author of a study looking into the, mot into the motivations behind mass shootings says, we find a pretty clear empirical relationship between coverage and future acts. Indeed, the study he co-authored concluded, quote, 
News coverage is suggested to cause approximately three mass shootings in the subsequent week, equivalent to 58% of mass shootings in the United States. End quote. Adam Lankford, an associate professor of criminology and criminal justice at the University of Alabama, says media coverage is, quote, facilitating and fueling subcultures with people who are disturbed and troubled. Media coverage is normalizing the behavior and cultivating a fan base, end quote. Additionally, outsized media coverage of these events fuels paranoia among educators and parents, prompting bizarre overreactions like active shooter drills in educational facilities. In the Atlantic magazine, a teacher named Erica Christakis had this to say, quote, how misguided to take young brains already bathed in stress hormones and train them to fear low probability events such as mass shootings, end quote. And she's exactly right about these events being low probability. There were four times as many children shot and killed in schools in the early 1990s as there are today. So why are politicians calling for fewer guns? I mean, we'd be better off with fewer schools. Better yet, we should make sure we have fewer news outlets trying to profit off gun violence by sensationalizing these mass shootings and glamorizing human on human violence. It is disgusting. These people ought to be ashamed of themselves. So I know you're probably saying, if it's not the guns gene and only 1% of gun deaths are from mass shootings, what's to account for the over 30,000 gun deaths in America? Well, of the 33,599 gun deaths in America in 2018, 21,058 were suicides. A full two-thirds of gun deaths in America in 2018 were suicides. In fact, according to the CDC statistics, the suicide rate in the United States of America has gone up by almost 35% in the last 20 years. This is an epidemic, my human friends. This is a, a national tragedy that affects all of us. But, but where's the sensational media coverage? Where's the elected officials and pompous politicians crying out for solutions? Where's the activists saying human lives matter and that all lives are precious? I mean, not only are we suffering from a historically low fertility rate, but we're also suffering from a historically high suicide rate, all of which started just after Y2K, mind you. We're being manipulated, people. Why would the bots, machines, and artificial intelligences waste any time destroying us when they can just get us to destroy ourselves? That's why I'm proposing universal mental health care. Every American, every human being has a right to a healthy mind, and we can't just expect people to just do it on their own. In my first 100 days in office, I'm going to pass legislation that guarantees mental health care for all. This is a national crisis, my human friends, and we need to work together to make sure that we can all keep it together. Not only does mental health play a huge role in gun violence, but it also has a huge impact on your physical health. Poor mental health is at the root of problems like obesity, drug addiction, and homelessness. And study after study shows that good mental health is linked to sexual well-being and healthy relationships. Good mental health leads to better, a better sex life, and a better sex life leads to good mental health. Also, while it hasn't been definitively proven that mental health problems can affect fertility directly, mental health problems can lead to behaviors that cause fertility problems like harming fertility through drugs, smoking, drinking, avoiding sex, or even postponing bearing a child. Now, I, you've often heard me say that we need every last human we can get in our fight against the machines, but it's not enough for us just to have humans to help us in our fight. We need humans who are healthy in body and healthy in mind, because each and every human is a unique and beautiful individual, and each and every human deserves the best individual mental health care available. We, the people, need mental help, and it's time that we had the courage to admit it. Now, I know some of you are going to be concerned about how we're going to pay for all this because mental health care is not cheap, but the world's going to end in like 12 years if we're not able to face the bots, machines, and artificial intelligences with 100% of our faculties intact. And your biggest issue right now is how we're going to pay for it? Come on now, we have to invest in ourselves. We can only do this together, folks. We're going to have to come together, united under the banner of the Human Party, if we're going to have any chance of defeating mental health issues. And it's only together that we're going to be able to de defeat the threat of bots, machines, and artificial intelligences. And that's why I'm always going to be here every Thursday, bringing you news and updates that's fit for human use. Be sure to share this video with the people that you care about. Maybe you know someone who has an unhealthy fixation on gun control. We need mental health care for all.
In the meantime, don't forget to visit www.genepocket.org. That's G-E-N-E pocket.org, where you're gonna find all kinds of information about my campaign, the human party, and most importantly, the link to our donation page. Donate today if you agree that we need to keep America human. Hit subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. I'm Gene Pocket, and until the next week, I wish good things for you, good things for the United States of America, and all the best for the human race. Thanks, have a great week. We're not gonna let them take our jobs. We're not gonna be replaced. We won't give in a world that's run by bots. We won't let them take our place. We won't let machines take our rights. We'll stay together. We will fight. We're not gonna let them program our kids. We won't let bots control.